Hello, this is Mrs. Arnold, and in this video, we will talk about absolute age dating. Questions you should be able to answer at the end of this lesson are, what are the differences between absolute age dating and relative age dating? How are radioactive elements used to date rocks and other objects? And how can scientists use certain non-radioactive material to date geologic events? The main idea of this lesson is radioactive decay in certain kinds of sediments help scientists determine the numeric age of many rocks. Absolute age dating is determining the numerical age of rocks in other objects. When we do this, we measure the decay of radioactive isotopes in igneous and metamorphic rock. And we can also measure the remains of some organisms preserved in sediment. Or should I say sediment? Radioactive decay is the emission of radioactive particles and the resulting change into other isotopes. So this is a very good way to measure the age of something because these nuclear particles are emitted at a constant rate regardless of pressure, temperature, or any physical changes. Radio, radiometric dating is a method scientists use to date an object using radioactive isotopes. So as we can see in this picture, as the number of parent atoms decrease during radioactive decay, the number of daughter atoms increase by the same amount. We can use the ratio of the parent isotope to daughter product in a mineral to um, determine the amount of time that has passed since the object had um, since the object formed. A half-life is the length of time it takes for one half of the original isotope to decay. So at formation, the mineral has 100% 
of the parent isotope. After one half-life, there is 50% parent remaining and 50% daughter remaining, um, daughter present. And after two half-lives, there is 25% parent remaining and 75% daughter present. So scientists can date igneous or metamorphic rocks by examining the parent-daughter ratios of the radioactive active isotopes in the minerals that make up the rock. The question that they have to ask is which isotope that is best to use to date that rock. So an example is we have uranium-235 with a half-wife of 700 million years that can be used to date rocks that are a few tens of millions of years old, while uranium-238, which has a longer half-life, than uranium-235 can be used to date rock that is hundreds of millions of years, um, years old. When we date sedimentary rocks, we date them using the layers of igneous rock or volcanic ash that are above and below the sedimentary layers. Um, this is because the minerals in most sedimentary rocks were formed from pre-existing rock. Their dates proved the ages of the older, older rocks, but not the age that the sedimentary rock was laid down, okay? So that's why we have to date the sedimentary rock by dating the igneous or volcanic ash. So minerals, so why? Because minerals in sedimentary rock are from pre-existing rock because sedimentary rock is um, from pre-existing rock. So if you date the minerals in sedimentary rock, you will get the age of the older rocks and not the age of the sedimentary rock itself. Radiocarbon dating is used to determine the age of organic materials. So the tissues of all living organisms, including yourself, contains carbon-14. So during an organism's life, the carbon-14 decays, but it is continually replenished through respiration. So when you breathe, that carbon-14 is replaced. But when the organism dies, the carbon-14 is obviously no longer replenished. So over time, the amount of carbon-14 in that organism decreases. Can 
measure the amount of carbon-14 in organic material to figure out how long it has been since the organisms died. So because of that, we can use the amount of carbon-14 to figure out how long it's been since the organism has died. And this is only useful for things that are 60,000 years. We can also absolute date using tree rings. Dendrochronology is the science of using tree rings to determine absolute age. Many trees contain a record of time in the rings of their trunks called the annual tree rings. These rings consist of a pair of early season and late season growth rings. The width of the rings depends on certain conditions in the environment. So they can help geologists date relatively recent geologic events in environmental changes. So for example, if there was um, if there were a year with lots of rain, then the rings are wide. An example shown in this picture is um, Mesa Verde National Park, where archaeologists archaeologists can um, determine the age of the raptors in the pueblos. The beams in the pueblo, okay. So they were able to um, use dendrochronology to determine how old the beam was. We can also absolute date using ice cores. Like tree rings, they contain a record of past environmental conditions. So that should be of such as temperature and atmospheric composition and annual layers of snow deposition. Summer ice will tend to have more bubbles and larger crystals than winter ice. And this can be used to study climate change because stores past environmental conditions and also can be used to study glacial cycles throughout Earth's history. The final way we can absolute date is by using VARBs. VARBs are bands of alternating light and dark colored sediments of sand, clay, and silt. The summer deposits are generally going to be light, large sand-sized particles, while the winter deposits are dark, fine-grained sediments. We see VARBs near um, they're typical of lake deposits near glaciers where sedimentation happens in the summer during the meltwater, meltwaters, but not during winter. So this in particular, because of that, can be used to date cycles of glacial sedimentation.
Today we learned about isotopes and how they can be used to absolute date rocks. Have a wonderful day and be kind to one another.